let's begin. So for this orientation, I hope to be very brief, concise, and engaging because we are physically distant at this point. But I'd like still to be connected with you, though this could this is virtual in essence. So I'd like to call this uh, flexible, possible, possible. <laughs> I am again Jickerson Lado, an assistant professor at the Genetics and Molecular Biology Division of the Institute of Biological Sciences, College of Arts and Sciences. I am the director of the Office of Scholarships and Grants, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. I was invited here primarily because of my membership to different UPLB committees, including the Committee on Remote Learning, the Committee to Develop the Student Guidebook on Flexible Learning, okay, and the Committee on Scholarships and Financial Assistance. All right, so you may reach me at jplado at up.edu.ph for any questions, and or you may want to reach me via social media networking sites at Jickerson Lado, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Please also, I have made my Instagram for the science that I do. I really believe to, that we need to communicate our science okay, as scientists at Jickerzone. Okay. I am posting a lot of things about coconut you know, as a coconut scientist of the country. Thank you. Okay, so before we begin, let me just give you some announcements about flexible, flexible remote learning of the university. So there is actually a remote learning 101 for students course, and it's free and it's open. Okay, you may access it at ilc ecourses.uplb.edu.ph. ILC is the Interactive Learning Center of the University. Again, that's ILC ecourses.uplb.edu.ph. So it is a short online course so to give you an idea of what remote learning will be like. So second announcement, there is you know, to be released a student guidebook on flexible learning. There is a student guidebook on flexible learning. And most of the content contents here in this orientation are in from the, in this orientation is from this guidebook so please you know, kindly download them once this guidebook is available online all right so for the longest time we've been accustomed with face-to-face -face or physical mode of learning you go to class the teacher gives you the discussion the topic and then give you assessment whether by a quiz and then on an exam or a recitation okay that's a the face to face physical but what about flexible learning okay and then flexible learning i would see discuss later there, there could be several types of this okay one of which as you would know is the common term remote learning which is applicable for the first academic year you know, 2020 2021 for the university However, okay, some of you might, may have some apprehensions about this. Like, matututo po ba ako kapag flexible na, remote, online learning na daw? Eh, mawawala, mawawaka hindi ko po maintindihan or matutunan kapag kagaya ng face-to-face? -face, ganun po ba yon? Or paano po ako kapag wala po ako ng mga materials na kailangan? No? Ano pong gagawin? Okay? First, if face-to-face -face and physical are comp is compared to flexible learning and your, your worry is about the effectivity, I think it's not good to compare them as separately. Let's say, for example, face-to-face -face is an apple and flexible is an orange. Okay, I mean, Apples and orange, they are a source of nutrition. You know? They, they may appear differently, but that doesn't mean they're not effective. Mm -hmm. So it is now the, the task you know, of the university to ensure that what, whether that's physical, flexible modes of learning, you, know, you would still be able to get those lifelong learning experiences, whatever type of, or mode of learning that is. 
Okay. So, in in the context of the university, are we doing flexible learning? I have, I I remember this when I had a talk about or sharing about uh, teaching strategy teaching strategies in the UPLB hits no orientation, and I mentioned something about online classroom, and I didn't know it was a it was a somehow a force that what would happen here uh, this coming semester. However. Not just me. I'm pretty sure most faculty are actually doing somehow, you know, um, online classrooms, you know, even before this current situation. So yes, I think that we have been doing flexible learning for quite some time, but not as an institutionalized form that we already uh, that that we are actually going to do this academic year. So what is flexible learning this time? You, you, you must know that it is learner-centered, okay? And the learning process is embedded in it. That it, it could be personalized, it is inclusive and collaborative. So when we say personalized, because you are, you are to select the pace, you know, how, how much rate would it be, where would, you, where, would, where would the learning happen, and what mode of delivery would you like to take for this course or for the whole learning experience? Flexible learning would provide you options you know, to combine multiple modes of education delivery. And you would see several types in the next slide. Okay. So there are several. These are just some blended learning. You combine both physical and virtual delivery of the topics or the discussion okay flipped there are portions that are done virtually okay and that is this is under the guidance of an instructor m learning uses mobile tools any mobile phones or gadgets as learning platform and resources distance distance learning there is an involved set physical separation of the teacher and the student but virtual young education, you use computer hardware, software, and educational theory and practice to, to facilitate the learning. So here are other types that I want to emphasize on the bottom two. You also have adaptive learning, okay, which is customizable approaches you know, using technology. Online learning is purely online. Okay, internet-based yung mga ginagawa mo in online learning, which could be the mode for delivery for this semester. But this, this is not the appropriate term. We have to use remote or modular instruction you know, for next semester. Why? Remote is happening at home, okay? But you also follow scheduled class times. Therefore, it requires more accountability on your part as a learner. When you have modular instruction, you use learning modules. Because re remote learning doesn't equate directly to an online learning. In remote learning could also be in the form of, of physical modules that you would follow, you know, and the whole module would contain the, the topics and the, the content of the course. Okay? So remote learning and modular instruction. And in the modular instruction, it is self-instructional. So you would be able to learn the topics on your own. But still, you could still be guided by your um, faculty in charge. All right. Here are other terms that you have been uh, hearing quite some time when you hear the word synchronous, asynchronous. What are these? So when your, your professor said synchronous, it means real time. So meaning for a certain topic, you will have to discuss it on that on that specific time you have to meet with them okay virtually online in a specific time you are all in there you know, doing that same thing listening to the topic or having a paper discussion okay asynchronous means it's not real time the topics are there but the learning happens not necessarily simultaneously okay so it is now in on, you can set the pace on how that um, uh, learning would happen. But, but when it comes to flexible learning, 
it it is now lecture i'm sorry it is now um learner centered so as a learner what are your responsibilities and task you will be you will be very much adept with a greater degree of independent learning at this time ikaw na to no nasa sayo na to although you're of course your 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 faculty in charge of, for the course will be there for you um remotely but the learning now is highly dependent on one's self so ngayon dapat medyo mas mas maano mas masinop ka sa schedule mo mas alam mo yung mga deadlines kasi wala nang magde-remind sa hindi ka papasok sa klase na magpo-push sa iyo you will now be doing things on your own especially if it's remote asynchronous learning okay so there are several responsibilities when you attend synchronous learning sessions Make sure, ang usual tip ko dito, make sure you log in to the platform 15 minutes before the time. Be decent, be polite, uh, greet your classmates. No? The usual greeting that you would do when you have uh, physical classes. When you perform asynchronous learning activities, ito nga, ini-emphasize natin, we make sure you have a very good scheduling. Okay, management, you know, time management of your um, topics to be, to, be, to be learned at a, at a given time. And assessment you know, or study guide that, 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 needs, that need to be complete or submitted at a given time. Okay. So make sure you are in control of your, uh, of your courses. You must submit class requirements on time, or if there would be difficulty, make sure you can inform your faculty in charge ahead. Make again, make sure to always consult with your professors and academic advisor. Though it's remote, it doesn't mean they are letting you go. Hindi po ganon. Nanjan parin sila. Hindi lang kayo physically na sa isang classroom, no? You may be physically distant, but it. But it doesn't mean they will not be there for you. They will still be there and they are more than willing to, to assist you. So make sure you consult your professors and academic advisors. This is now, this, is, this flexible learning becomes self-regulated. So I am challenging everyone that you are going to regulate yourself. Ay, mukhang dapat tapos ko na siya dito. Ay, mukhang dapat tapos na ang hindi na ako manonood ng series na to hanggang episode 1 na lang, ganon. Na, because I need to make sure that this these modules and then the assessments, no, that I need to submit will be submitted on time. And you will only be reminded via email, via posts, no, in your in your in your classrooms, online classrooms, but you doing it in submitting it is similar to the physical classes that you have. Clear? All right. So what support services will be provided by my campus? Of course, a part of it is about, a part of it is about you, you doing your job. What about the university? Okay. So there are several concerns with this transition. Primarily, this is a self-paced learning and it's new. Something new is always is always a scary and change is scary but i think change is beautiful okay so self-paced learning now you're not in school so where is your primary learning environment it's the home so there are several concern there is a digital divide concern some of you may not have the technology needed for you to do remote learning or flexible learning Socioeconomic circumstance. Aside from the digital divide, there are also a lot of socioeconomic circumstances that can affect your learning. And of course, comes change, no? comes a different platform, comes a different modality is a concern in terms of our mental health and well-being. So we'll go through it. Each one of these concerns, we hope that the university there is there there are you no know, programs in store for this so for so self-paced learning and home as the primary learning environment for self-paced learning we are very proud to 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 tell you that our faculty and the university has prepared the, the faculty and the university have prepared learning packages or popularly known as correct 
course packs no so mga may mga ma-receive ka yung course packs whether in your online classroom your learning management systems or if you choose to have it on in a, a USB USB or a a, a uh, thumb drive or pwede ring physical module okay the, uni, the 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 college no your specific college has a mechanism for for you to to detect no or identify which one of you will receive which no learning management system as i have mentioned it is the platform where you will go either google classroom the usual moodle you also have canvas or edmodo but i think for this coming first semester okay we will be utilizing either google classroom or Moodle but the university is planning for a canvas as the official learning management system all right there's still the academic advising and there are a lot of access to online library and other online educational resources the details of these are available in the student primer now for socioeconomic circumstances that affect learning there is also a program no, known as peer learning groups so there will be peer tutors who are student assistants and they can support uh, in different remote learning contexts whether you're having difficulty transitioning to flexible learning pag nahihirapan kayo or you need assistance to understand a specific course kailangan nyo ng tutor okay there are peer learning groups for that and even other activities uh, activities that could enrich your learning experience. So, meron po niyan. Isa pa po na major na provide at ginawa ng paraan ng university is the Student Learning Assistance System or SLAS. Okay? So, ano po ba yung SLAS? This is part of the university's COVID-19 crisis action plan and it aims to address the needs of the vulnerable students particularly those who could be at a considerable disadvantage under the new normal, okay, when we have flexible remote modes of learning. So, ibig sabihin, ano pong ibig sabihin nitong SLAS na to? So, based on your household income and household characteristics, your learning assistance could be given in any form, whether you will be given a gadget, or an in, or internet subsidy you'll be given financial assistance and or other forms of support okay that is necessary for you this coming academic year so you call, we call them SLAS so paano sir paano po ako pupunta diyan so we are in transition the current system that we have is SFA the student financial assistance now this is UP system wide so just go to sfaonline.up.edu.ph. But it will transition today, you know, this uh, September 7. So please proceed to slasonline.up.edu.ph if you haven't um, accessed sfaonline.up.edu.ph. So for the schedule of this, I think very familiar na kayo dito kasi this has been going uh circulating online the sfa applications are ongoing the application period for the sfa happened august 28 to september to pero tapos na po siya we transition from sfa to slas and we continue the application period september 7 to 10 and this time it is under slas online that up that edu that ph okay so once you have went to the portal you logged in okay there will be the results of the the results will be revealed on September 11. So they will there will be a um, they will generate the results of uh, whatever you've uh, placed in there. So we will notify those students who would badly need gadget or internet subsidy in order for for that individual or that student to proceed to remote or flexible learning. Now, if you want to appeal because you failed to go to a certain category, 
the appeal period would be from September 11 to 13. So, sir, paano po ako magdalag in dito? You have to use your UP mail, official UP mail. If you're a freshman, you have your your UP mail will be provided by the office of the university registrar. Registrar. If you are old and <laughs> or and or continuing students, no, uh, pero you don't have UP mail, pa? You must email the UPLB Information Technology Center at itc.uplb at up.edu.ph. Clear? Of course, on top of all these changes and all these concerns, if you have self-paced learning, home as the primary environment, there is digital divide, there is socioeconomic circumstances, you know, and, any, and, and other factors that can affect you, it is all under the mental health and well-being category. But is there anything that the university is doing? Yes. We have the UP Mental Health and Wellness Program. These are a set of initiatives to address the needs of vulnerable students and promote care for mental health. Okay? So at the university, at the UP, no, ano po ang ginagawa ng mental health and wellness program? So we have student wellness systems and networks. This can provide information, referral systems, and mental health services to students with additional needs. Okay? And student help desk and guidance, which are network of social workers, counselors, who can provide academic, emotional, and legal support to students in special circumstances. Now, I want you to focus on the at the UP, UPLB level. We have the office of the Council, uh, office of counseling and guidance at ocg.uplb at up.edu.ph. Okay, so please uh, contact them using this email address. They also have a Facebook page, so kindly look for the Office of Counseling and Guidance for UPLB. All right. Siguro the last part that I would uh, focus on is my office, our office, the Office of Scholarships and Grants, or OSG. We are providing several student financial assistance on top of what I have discussed, the SLAS. So there are several financial assistance that we have in the university. So sana po ma-navigate ninyo po ito. So we have uh, rebracketing. Kung hindi ka pa under ng free tuition, you have a student financial assistance. You can be rebracketed. No, this is formerly known as the socialized tuition system. Okay? We also have numerous private and government-funded scholarships. Please visit the UPLB website, UPLB OSA website at uplbosa.org. uplbosa.org for the list of scholarships that you can actually apply to. Clear? We also have your student loans program, which could be tuition loan for those who are still not under the free tuition law, or if you need cash allowance or the CLAP program cash loan allowance program or cash loan assistance program rather okay <laughs> so that's clap and this coming um first semester 2020 2021 you can still become an sa not for nf but for continuing students student assistance you can earn you can still you can earn no monetary or you can have your salary while learning Nag-aaral ka, then nagtatrabaho ka. So some offices would actually still continue with the SA program. Maliwanag po ba? Okay. To end this talk, let me give you a very short video clip about the Office of Scholarships and Grants. Okay? So later, I will be answering some of your questions. And thank you very much. I hope you've learned a lot from this short talk.